Hi, my name is Preet Singh. I'm a professor at the School of Material Science and Engineering at Georgia Tech. Welcome to part two of corrosion testing module. Uh, in previous module, we learned about uh, uh, direct current methods to measure corrosion rate for a uh, situation where uniform corrosion is uh, going on. In this module, we're going to talk about uh, 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 localized corrosion measurements. So in uniform corrosion, uh, which occurs for uh, active metal, uh, as we increase the potential, the current density, which is uh, related to corrosion rate, uh, that also increases linearly uh, when you plot it against uh, potential against log of current density. Now, there are metals which actually don't show that behavior. So in these type of metals, typical polarization curve or the curve between potential and current density uh, looks like a S curve. So in these uh, cases, when you start from uh, E corrosion or corrosion potential and increase potential in anodic direction, you have that active region where uh, as you increase potential, corrosion current density increases, but at some potential, uh, the corrosion current density or corrosion rate actually starts to drop as you increase potential. And that is the uh, uh, part or that is the potential at which you start to form an oxide film at the surface. Now, with further increase in potential, what you, what you see is that current density really doesn't change much uh, with increase in potential. So in this region, uh, uh, we can say that uh, passive film is formed at the surface. And if you go to further higher potentials, uh, uh, another region may uh, come, which is called transpassive region. In this region, uh, some reaction uh, which is other than metal oxidation, for example, evolution of uh, oxygen in aqueous environments, that can happen. Now, in, uh, it is also possible that uh, in some cases, this is actually a breakdown of passive region. So in that case, uh, this may also indicate a breakdown or a metal again becoming active. Now, in presence of aggressive ions like chloride, so in that case, the passivity can break down. So if that happens, you, uh, locally, you can start to get pitting. So in that case, the uh, transpassive region uh, can be seen at lower potential. So we don't call it transpassive uh, potential, but we start to call it as <coughs> pitting potential. So what that indicates is that due to local breakdown of passivity, now uh, pits have started to initiate. So in material which behaves in active passive uh, way, uh, you can actually get localized corrosion, which basically looks like small little pits here. Uh, so these pits are where locally that passivity uh, will break down uh, because, because of uh, presence of chloride and at uh, under oxidizing conditions. If we uh, think about uh, uh, localized corrosion, uh, we can also use some electrochemical techniques because by just following this uh, active passive behavior of alloys or uh, finding out potentials at which uh, passivity breaks down, we can actually determine uh, whether these materials will undergo localized corrosion under oxi oxidizing conditions or not. So we can use electrochemical techniques. So here is an example. <coughs> in this case, we have uh, a stainless steel in magnesium chloride solution, which is de aerated at 50 degrees Celsius. So you can see that as we increase our potential, uh, so we go from E corrosion and we go towards positive side we, we find that uh, uh, the potential doesn't go linearly, so that's a uh, uh, passive state, but at some stage, the current starts to move or increase suddenly, so this is now our pitting potential. Now, with further increase in potential, current keeps on increasing, so at that point, we decide that we are going to cycle this potential backwards 
So we get reverse cycling and during reverse cycling it doesn't follow the same path but forms what is called a hysteresis loop uh, in this region. So again uh, when we reach that pitting potential or uh, this, this region we start to get localized breakdown of passivity and once we cycle or reverse, uh, use reverse cycle to uh, lower the potential, we can actually have a situation where at some potential we get repassivation and that potential is called repassivation potential. So just by doing this what is called a cyclic polarization curve, we can actually get pitting potential which is shown here, also protection potential which is equivalent to this region. So uh, if a pit starts between protection potential and pitting potential, uh, it will continue to grow whereas if we go below protection potential, the pit will repassivate or form a passive film and uh, slow down. So apart from these uh, uh, localized uh, corrosion methods that we test uh, talked about in terms of cyclic polarization curve. Uh, there are many other methods for other forms of uh, corrosion. They are mentioned here. So we have, for example, for slow st uh, a stress corrosion cracking, we have slow strain rate tests or constant strain tests, but all these tests take long time. So they can't be, uh, they can't be labeled as uh, high throughput methods, but still, uh, there, there are no uh, methods available to test for this, these forms of corrosion uh, in uh, short time periods. Similarly, for corrosion fatigue test, uh, you t uh, undergo, uh, you carry out similar type of uh, tests which you do for normal uh, air fatigue. Only thing is that you now do these tests in environment that you are interested in. Uh, erosion corrosion tests, there are some accelerated uh, tests available but again they all take time because corrosion uh, does uh, take time uh, to occur in these cases. So what we have learned from uh, these two parts uh, of corrosion testing uh, module are that uh, we can use electrochemical methods to measure uniform or general corrosion rates. Uh, we have uh, learned that uh, uh, there are two different uh, electrochemical methods uh, which can be used for corrosion measurement, TAFL method and polarization resistance method. Uh, we also learned that uh, most engineering metals form a protective passive film at the surface. If film breaks down, uh, then that can lead to localized corrosion. Passive behavior of metal or alloy can be studied using this electrochemical method. So we use electrochemical method called cyclic polarization method uh, to determine pitting or crevice uh, uh, corrosion susceptibility of these metals. Uh, test methods uh, for other modes are also available on, uh, and are well established, but they are not high throughput. They may take time to get reliable re results. Thank you.